Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Absolutely delighted to be joined by Alex Buckner. How thank are you, man? Thank you very much. Very good, thank you. Yourself? I'm doing all right. Um, no. We bumped into each other last week, met uh, for the first time at Renaissance uh, right. last week. Uh, Stuart from Foresight introduced us, heard a little bit about your story, and, you know, when we spoke, I just thought people would love to hear, you know, that a, a young... 25? 25. 25 yeah, yeah. year old lad out on the tour, working with tour players, and, and here, as an inspirational story, in all honesty, Alex, like how the heck did you out here so young? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure myself to a certain <laughs> degree. It's, uh, I, whether it's luck, whether it's hard work, I'm not yeah. entirely sure. But, um, you know, I was, I was a busy coach back at my home club um, a couple of years ago, and I just wanted to teach elite golfers. Yeah. There's this trend coming into the idea of like, you say teams, sure. people that know a lot about one area and do mm -hmm. it really well rather than, you know, half-hearted in every area. Yep. And, uh, you know, you can see the guys out here this week, they've got different coaches for different things, making sure they're getting the most out of their coaches. So the direction took that way. Yeah. And, um, you know, putting, there's, there's a lot of guys, but not necessarily short game. So mm -hmm. I just basically tried to learn everything that I possibly could around short game. And uh, from the guys in the States, as well as the UK, yep. going to see people. And then, um, and also I just got, you know, that one lucky break of mm -hmm. a player just turning around going, look, can you help me out? Absolutely. And you all of a sudden do a good job. Yeah, yeah. Look at it for maybe a bit bigger than what it is rather than just how do you hit it? Mm -hmm. More a case of, right, how does training look? How does course prep look? How do you play these different shots? Someone does well. Yeah. It then just, you know, feeds over to everyone else. And uh, yeah, I've been very, very lucky with uh, with the opportunities that I've had and I've, I've taken them, which, is, which has been great. You're right when you say building a team around a player is exactly what makes sense. Mm. If we look at the best, teams in especially north american sports if yeah. you look at an nfl team there's an offensive coach there's a defensive coach there's a specials team coach you know all, all these different team members around the team to make them you know play their absolute best and why why wouldn't you do that exactly and i think it's quite refreshing to sort of hear basically a different voice mm -hmm. talking about you know not as you know golf's golf at the end of the day but yeah. you know different areas and i think when you hear the same voice for too long in a week, for sure. it's, uh, you sort of mentally switch off. Definitely. So uh, yeah, having that team environment, making sure everyone's on the same page, mm. players get more out of it. I think the coaches get more out of it as well because yep. it's draining to work mm. <laughs> that hard about around you know all the details of golf. I mean, yep. golf's made up of a lot of things. So to take some pressure off each other um, and make sure the fact that the player's fully engaged and getting the most out of it, why wouldn't you do it? Definitely, definitely. So your main charge this week, Richard Mansell, um, he he did he win his his local his, his uh, final qualifier. He j I think he came third. It was he quite third. interesting. Like he, he didn't have his game. That was right. That, that was, I remember that, we yeah. chatted about that last and week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he, he didn't have his game, and and he still managed to do it. I mean, it's his second time he's qualified for the Open. Got through all the America right. uh, through the US mm -hmm. and and played the US Open. So you know the fact that he managed to qualify while not having his game was yeah. a real credit to how good he is. Um, so and a short game, you know. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah, Because that's yeah. the thing. If if you're if you're not hitting it well, if you don't feel like you're quite on song and putting the ball where it needs to be, mm. you're going to need that short game. Yeah, yeah, of course. So how is how is his short game specifically? I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, we've had obviously some bits in the past where you've had to focus on other areas, mm -hmm. take a little bit of a back seat. When we first got together, you know, that was like the main focus, and we got mm -hmm. into a fantastic spot. And then it's taking a back seat with other things taking a priority. You got yeah. to remember the short game is such a small part specifically you know how many shots you have of it if, yep. especially if you hit that many greens mm -hmm. which he does so now we're sort of realizing right what weeks is it important yep. when do you yep. need to spend most time doing it i mean this week you know is no exception around the green <laughs> you know you're not hitting a lot of chip shots mm -hmm. but wedges into the holes is is massive especially if you're hitting it long with the burnout fairways yeah. so we're starting to understand right when does stuff take priority mm -hmm. because it, when he puts his concentration into it he's fantastic at whatever he does right. just making sure focus is put in the right he's areas focus so so let's talk about this week specifically we've been in the the, the trailers with the guys they're talking a lot about wedges uh you know maybe shaving a little bounce off here maybe just just tidying up the the, the shaping of the sole and how it's going to uh, work through this turf. What changes for you in a week like this when turf conditions are a little bit unique versus what the guys experience on a week-to-week -week, uh, basis on the DP World Tour? Yeah, because around here, like last week, you know, 
links is links mm -hmm. to a degree, but last week all the greens are raised. Right. So all of a sudden you're being on a little bit of an upslope. Mm -hmm. If not, you're trying to then chip onto an upslope and you're figuring out, right, well, do I putt it? Do yeah. I bump it? Do I lob it? In that sense. And, uh, you know, if you're chipping a lot, then bounce and grinds obviously matter quite a lot. Yeah. This week, most of the greens are generally flat. Right. They're not that raised. Mm -hmm. So more often than not, actually you're putting yeah. half the time. And then you're going into then the ground ambiances regarding them pitching. And yeah. with the hard surfaces, if you have too much there, you, it's, you know, for these guys, it's going to come out too low on the face. Yeah. And you're just not going to be able to access some correct grooves because the surface, as you say, is pushing that club out of the ground a bit too quickly. If you've right. got too much sole there, mm -hmm. then you know you just need a little bit shaven off so you can access that right part, get that flight window and spin that you desire Absolutely. to be able to get it close. So that's what the guys would be looking for this week. And obviously the sand, when you come to the, the links, the sand is, is a very different texture as well, a lot heavier. Yeah. What, what do you what do you kind of find when you're in there? From a, a, an equipment standpoint, but also from a, a technique standpoint, yeah. what, what what do the players need to do slightly differently from their week-to-week -week technique? Well, this is the thing, right? So if the sand is like, as you say, a lot heavier, mm -hmm. and also you take a lot of bounce off, it's much easier to get a much deeper divot yeah. um, point. So all of a sudden, they're gonna have to therefore change the technique and control how deep they right. move into the sand. Yeah. Where sort of the technique lies regarding them this week, especially with the pot bunkers, because mm -hmm. it's so thick, um, the pool isn't actually rolling to the middle because normally bunkers are shaped. Yeah. So they always, you know, hit a surface and roll into yeah, the middle yeah. and then you just got a normal shot. But mm -hmm. <laughs> if the ball slightly rolls in, it doesn't roll anywhere when it gets in it. Right. So all of a sudden you're standing to it like super awkwardly. Awkward lies. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Which is great. It's, you know, it's actually, a penalty yeah yeah but the way that sh the way that it was intended way it was intended yeah. exactly you know you're avoiding these bunkers mm -hmm. yeah a lot of time you're going you know please get in it so yeah, i could get yeah. a little bit of spin control around the ground mm -hmm. it's just it's not that weak right. uh, avoid them at all costs and then if you get into them little sticky situations it's all about how to stand to it mm -hmm. um you know we talk we talk about a lot about adapting yep. you know when the amount of variables are around the green being consistent is actually not the goal. It's right. about adapting. Right. You know, you can get a consistent outcome from that as a result. Mm -hmm. But if you stand to it the same and play it the same every single time, yeah. something's going to find you out at the right. end of the day. Totally. So, you know, the, the rest of the week for you now is just fine tuning with, with Richard. It's, it's little bits here and there, making sure that he's completely comfortable and, and just basically getting him ready for Thursday morning. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got, obviously we want to, be out on the golf course a lot more than the range like we were saying a second right. ago about yeah. the consistencies mm -hmm. nothing's consistent in links it's all about adapting you yep. know you're never going to be on a flat spot so let's let's not hit dozens of wedges on a flat spot let's actually go out there right where the pins are located they're going to be i would put just above some of the ridges mm -hmm. so you've got to understand right let's try and then work this side of the flag yep. how do we want that ball to fly do we want it under the wind and skipping up mm -hmm. to the green or do we want that ball to stop quickly yeah. carry that slope and take all the trouble out and leave yourself a nice putt so you have to fly wedges incredibly differently mm -hmm. and correct size of the hole yep. while adapting to therefore the slope on the ground mm -hmm. They're the free tusks. So on the range, can you do that? You know, to a degree. To you know, degree. the wind direction yeah. is always the same, which mm. is, I think, fine for the front line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So because you go straight out there, yep. so you can do a lot of front line work and for it to be quite good. But um, and you know, you can work obviously right. We're going to go this side of the mm. pin and blah blah blah, and you know, put a, a dozen of pin locations on the uh, you know the old chart, and we go yep. right. You know, we can hit to here. It's going to avoid the slope and we want the ball to react like this you know you can get real specific with it but only so much yeah. so a lot of it's going to be on course making sure that he's got enough shots and understanding how to adapt whenever this links weather and links to uh, golf courses uh, changes from... and, and it can can't it? i mean today yeah. we, you know we we're all out here yesterday beautiful day i mean we're so all I looking going this is this it. is nice but it's, you know it's not an open no. if, it, if there's no wind and it's, it's sunny this feels like an open yeah. you know there is challenging out there the boys in the range are i've got that kind of uh wind coming out the left and you can see they're having to play with their, their ball flight in order to control it and things like that so it, it's going to be a test for these boys it is yeah i think the wind is actually blowing in the same direction all week um, that's good which is yeah. uh, which is fine at least some of the prep is going to be therefore mm -hmm. relatable right half the time you know you prep for a certain wind yep. come thursday it's the complete opposite mm -hmm. and you know it's that 
the same old quote, you know, the first to adapt wins at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so at least this week, you don't need to do too much from a win perspective. Right. But if the wind gets up, it can play tricky. Right. According to the weather, I don't think it's going to get up as much as what I think people would like. Okay, and it's going to settle down a little bit. I think so. You know, yeah. you, you never know. It's hard to always tell. <laughs> I mean, the good thing is there'll always be something to keep them on their toes, won't there? Oh, yeah, completely. Always be something. Always. So, you're home base right now. You're down in uh, down in southern England. That's right. Um, yeah. We, by the time this goes out, we're just talking, you, you've got a new home base. Yeah, new home base, really looking forward to that. I was at uh, Rygate Hill, which has it's been brilliant to me. Um, the guys have uh, done a tremendous job yep. and uh, yeah, really like being there, but it's just a bit too far away from home. So right, right. I've moved back to actually to five minutes down the road from where I am, Bearwood Lakes. I was a member there. As a kid, mm -hmm. worked there. It was my first job. You know, I think it was kitchen porting. Were uh, you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done every job in there. Yeah, I've cleaned the clubs and the bag <laughs> store, picked the balls, wow. you name it. So, so yeah, that's I'm, home. That's home. Yeah. And it's great to go back home as a Brilliant. very different role. So I'm I really looking that. forward to starting. Phenomenal, phenomenal. And, and in terms of the, the, the viewers watching, I mean, you're not, you're a, you are a tour coach. You're not just a tour coach. You work with you know, everyday golfers, people who are just trying to improve as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get, you know, <laughs> get like two yippers a week yeah. you know, on average, <laughs> then get the really good guys, yeah. some guys in between. I, I, I deal with everything. With everything. So, uh, yeah, keeps you on my toes. Love it. Well, one thing's for sure, we're, we're going to do some stuff together, aren't we, over the next uh, the next few years? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as soon as we can get ourselves back over here, and obviously this is a very special week and one we're focusing on the tournament, but, you know, I'd love to get down to Bearwood Lakes with you and we've talked about down and visiting the Mizuno guys while we're yeah, down yeah. there, so it'll be nice to, to do that. Obviously, introduce you guys to Alex and, and kind of his philosophies and concepts uh, around short game because ultimately we want that to help you guys. We want that to to translate into how you guys can change some of the the challenges and struggles in, in you know everyone's short game or bunker play, whatever that might be. So we'll do that for sure. Ian, thank you so you much. Got it, appreciate pal. it. Thank Look you for the time. Soon. Definitely, guys, follow Alex. What's your uh, social media handles out so everyone can follow along? So Alex Butner Golf. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, yep. Facebook, mostly Instagram. I use mostly, to be honest. Yep. And then uh, he said the website alexbutnergolf.com. Love it. We will leave the links to that as well. So uh, make sure you follow Alex. He's going to be out here. He's going to be at his new base at Bearwood Lakes. Anywhere you know he's going to be, there'll be content going. You do a great job with that, keeping oh, keeping the you. content going. So you can always keep up with Alex on those. Excellent. All right, guys, stay tuned for more. We'll see you again soon.